Fun Fishing is brought to you by Fisherman's Warehouse, Double X Tackle, and Vance's Tackle. Alan, remember when I had the Superman shirt on and I tried out fishing? Oh yeah, it didn't work. Well, look at this. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Fun Fishing, plus you got it on back. Right, yeah, fish on! <laughs> Fishing is fun, but catching fish is funner. Oh, when fish it's hot, to winter, spring, to summer. From Sacramento to River to the San Francisco Bay, we're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. Salmon, bass, or trout, halibut is what it's all about. Stripers on the Delta. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. It's on. Alright. Let's go, fishing! Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. Welcome to Fun Fishing. I'm Warren Trumbly. Hi, I'm Alan Fong. We're down here in the California Delta, and we're gonna show you guys how to do some bass fishing. Okay, and tides are important? Tides, current, Weeds and the height, the water height, very important. We're going to show the viewers how I attack this delta down here and catch a lot of fish. So we're going to be talking about all of those today? We're going to be talking about all of those and I'm going to show them how to catch them. I'm going to show you my secrets. Oh no, not really. <laughs> Are we going to be catching a lot of fish? I am. <laughs> catch <you. laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you watch me. Okay. Don't watch me. All right. Well, let's get going and let's catch some fish. Yeah, let's, well, let's go let's fishing. Go. All right. All right. I think one of the hardest things to understand is actually the tide. You know, you get a tide book and you'll uh, pick it up and look at it and you're kind of confused by the numbers on the side. They actually give you the water height, how much the water falls every day. Here's one. Here's one. Good I got. Well, you got lucky, didn't you? Lucky? Shoot. <laughs> this is breakfast. The next one will be lunch. And the last one will be dinner. We got a bet, right? Yeah, I guess so. It's McDonald's for breakfast, uh, Burger King for lunch, and uh, dinner will be top of the world. Warren, see where, see where we're at right now on this bank here? Right now we're at a incoming tide, so the water's rising. It'll be up probably about another foot, and then it'll start heading out. And what happens is, like right now, we're going over some weeds right now, but later on, we're going to bring the viewers back here and show them how there's no water here later in the afternoon. No water here? So tides are very important, because when the tide rises, the fish move in off these weeds to feed, and then as the tide falls, they move out. And I believe they sit underneath these weeds, and they don't... They don't actually do anything. They'll just sit there and wait till the water moves up at a certain height, and then they'll come up and feed again. I mean, you could always catch them, but I've always had better luck when the water is higher uh -huh. than lower. You know, every day of these fish, their lives, the tide comes up and down two times a day. So in other words, you have a high and a low, a high and a low every day. And what happens is those fish are born, so every day that's just part of their daily routine, so they know. Right now we're using reaction baits, trying to get one. Usually in the morning they'll be out on the edges of the tules they're feeding. But sometimes when the water rises, they'll move inside these tules where the water is way back there, and you can't actually get to them. So in that sense, in there we'll start flipping and doing different types of fishing instead of using these reaction stuff on the outside. So I mean, you might want to try it, get your. Uh, 
sweep beaver or your sinkle mm -hmm. and start pitching it up into the two leaves. Okay. Now, what's the difference between a, a reaction bait and a sinkle? A uh, sinkle is more of a subtle, slow presentation where you're just dropping it down in front of them. And your reaction baits are something that you're moving it a little bit faster and they actually have to come out and strike it okay. instead of dropping it in their face. Because you can see these little buffer zones inside here, you know, where there's weeds, like where you're throwing, it's all deep water. Uh -huh. But where that buffer zone is, where they're going to be sitting, it's about 10 feet from us to the two. It's uh -huh. actually the clear area. And they use those zones to feed in. They ambush stuff as they move in. So a lot of these fish are actually looking toward the tules, not looking out, you know, where at. Okay, so so they're, not, they're not in the tules looking back out. They're out here looking back into the They're tules. looking into the tules. Something yeah. come out and then they whack them. So that's why sometimes, you know, you can go to a flipping bait mm -hmm. and have be more successful. We're going to try it in a minute here. Oh! Oh! Shoot! What did you happened? see that? What happened? <laughs> I did a warn number. <laughs> did a warn number. You're, you're running well. <laughs> see these spots? They're going to be sitting in your sh your shaded pockets. Or, mm -hmm. See those tulies right there? Yeah. You see how the water is a different color? That means there's no weeds there. So those are the spots you want to flip. Okay. Being accurate with your pitching and your flipping mm -hmm. is so crucial down here. Fish on. Oh. See another one, Alan? Oh. You got your little pocket counter? <laughs> you see that lip? Because he's probably been digging in trying to get caught at. We'll be back with more fun fishing. Fun Fishing is brought to you by Double X Tackle, Fisherman's Warehouse, and Vance's Tackle. Uh, see that stuff way back there? Mm -hmm. Way in there, that's where you should go. Because underneath those weeds, it's still like a highway. Okay. See, those are the things you have to you look for. I always look for my next target before I even get my lure out of the water. When I pitch in, I'm already looking around, seeing where else I'm going to go. So with these sweet beavers, you're just casting out and letting them fall and then yeah, bring them just, right back in? Yep, I usually let it, you let it fall and then I might move it once or twice, just lift it up and down and then pull it back out and re-flip. Because if they're anywhere around, especially on when they're feeding, they're real aggressive. So when you pitch it in there, he'll come and eat it. If he doesn't eat it in one or two pumps, you're not going to get it. Okay. And like, see all this floating hyacinth, mm -hmm. a lot of them are probably back in the back yet because I think the tide's just changing. Okay. And they're probably still sitting way in the back of those pockets. See, as we're coming over here, you see this Thule corner right here? Okay. Wind's blowing, current's going this way at us. Uh -huh. The fish are looking that way. They're looking. Okay. So right now, if I figured there'd be a fish, you'd be right in the corner of that Thule right there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast past the point. And then I'm going to just swim it by real slow. And he should be looking that way, right at my lure. Will he be in front of the tulip or behind He'll him? be right there, right in that little shade pocket. So, like, if there was one there, he would have ate my lure, but he didn't. But he, see, the way the current and the wind's blowing, he would be looking that way, okay. and he'd be right in the shade on the corner of that tulip right there. Okay. And if you brought your lure by there, he would just come out and ambush it. Okay. So, what I'm looking for points, like out here, see these isolated tulies? Mm -hmm. Same thing. They're going to be looking. Sometimes they'll use these ones on the outside, and sometimes they'll use one on the inside. So I'm going to go right by where you just went. Yeah. Sometimes Dude. it takes multiple cows to give them a hit. Whoa! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was wishful thinking. <laughs> but see that all these spots out here are just places that they would sit by utilizing the current mm -hmm. and the weeds. Okay. And they're just an ambush point for them. All right. So it could be just a little stick up like this where you only have a couple of little tulies, mm -hmm. or there could be a big clump like a solid mass wall. Okay. But they're going to be using that current in their favor. So all these spots, like there, like where you just cast, those are good spots. And remember, when you get a bite, you got to set it hard. Oh, 
Tá um. Go in there. Ooh. Right where he's supposed to be, right on that little tuny corner right there. Uh -huh. Nice little bass. Nice. You got that on a horny toad? Yep. Mm -hmm. See how we got the wind blowing in? Uh -huh. Tide coming in. And what happens is like see these little like this corner, like this tule clump right here. Uh-huh. They'll sit on that corner and they have to face into the current. So when you bring your bait to the outside of the point, that's when you usually generate your strike. So you want to pitch it right on the outside of the corner here. Okay. And just reel it past real slow right there. And see these little islands? Like this is like a little island all by itself. Mm -hmm. Usually when you get someplace like this with a little depth in it, there's usually a fish here. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> Wasn't the one I wanted, but that's a fish. <laughs> and you know, like right now, the boat, the boat's actually only sitting in about two feet of water. You can look down and see the weeds right there. But it's real shallow here. And as this tide rolls out later today, there won't even be no water here. Fish on. Another one bites the dust. You missed me. <laughs> <laughs> See that island? Still two fish. Uh -huh. Little ten foot spot there all by itself. Mm -hmm. and held, usually in the springtime you come up to a spot like that and there'd be like a five or six pounder. Mm -hmm. Nice little delta bass. Yeah. Fish on. Oh, nice one. Oh, big one. Need help? Got it. Oh, right one. <laughs> Woo. Oh, he got a bat. Wacky. Wacky. Did it get you or you caught him? <laughs> Surprised me. We'll be back with more oh. fun fishing. Feel the jerk on the other end? Yeah. Fun fishing is brought to you by Fisherman's Warehouse. Double X Tackle and Vance's Tackle. He did. <laughs> we saw what it looked like with high tide and we're seeing what it looks like when the tide's out. Yeah, this morning when we were fishing, the water was like two feet over the top of this. Uh -huh. Now look at it, it's just all laid down matted weed. Okay. And what happens, the fish, they sit underneath it and they just don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. They wait. As you know, that every day, two times, the tide goes up and down and they know it. And they go by feel. Uh -huh. So they are, there's idle time. Caught back in there, yeah, in the shallow water. Well, with the, with the shallow water, we're dropping the, the senkos and, and some of these senkos, these... sweet beavers. You know, most of the fish today were caught on senkos, yeah. but um, and we're dropping in these little holes in the weeds. Yeah. This morning we were catching them on top of them on horny toads and pitching senkos in the sparse too. Uh -huh. They okay. move right up on top of this well, stuff. Now, what type of rods and, and line and reels do we um, need? For this we're time? using braid line today. You know, this is 30 and 50 pounds and these rods are pretty stiff they're seven foot and they're usually rated 10 to 20 and they're real fast so they got a lot of muscle so when you set the hook you can get them out of those weeds as soon as when the water is over the top of it as soon as you hook when he dies in the weed yeah well that's the last one there he wrapped around the weeds and i i wasn't sure it was a fish after a minute or not at least you're honest yeah now when the tide's out fish the holes. Now when the tide's coming in or when the tide's going out? The tide comes in and the weeds just start to go under and that's when it gets good. Okay. And then the fish move up with the water. Okay. And then when it drops down, they move out. Let's catch a few more fish. Okay. Let's go try a little, few more places to see what happens. All right. Well, Alan, is this what you mean by tides? Yep. <laughs> this is where we were this morning. Yeah. Remember? Put up here on this corner, there was no there's no weeds, it's just no, all water. Tulis, we were way above this, we we're fishing over this. Yep, we actually went over top. This is what happens when the tide goes out. Uh -huh. So those fish just back off and they hide underneath this stuff and they so stay idle. This, they, they come out of the tulis and now they're under this. Yep, they stand under these mats. Oh, okay. 
but this is what I'm talking about. You know, it probably dropped three, four feet already. Mm -hmm. So the tide's still tide. on its way out, isn't it? Yep, still going. Out. Okay. So we're gonna get up here and get in this alley over here, and we could probably catch a couple. This morning they could have been way back in the tule. Mm -hmm. Now they don't have a choice. Okay. But it's really a lot choice. of work to getting in here. <laughs> to really you need a vegematic to go through this, don't you? Yeah. The dicer slicer. You kid. Here, come on. That one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, a worn fish. Oh. Look, I'm not warm. That's what's warm. <laughs> that guy over there. I'm gonna go down. It's a little clear. Hold on. Is that a fish already? I don't know what you're doing there, Alan. That guy back there. <laughs> oh, oh, one swirl behind it. Oh man. Oh. Boy, what a lot of work to catch this thing. <laughs> Nice one too. Oh man! Woohoo! <laughs> I think we'll wait to land this until after the commercial break. <laughs> Good thing that fish caught you. <laughs> oh! All right, nice. Oh my gosh! Oh, he came off too. Wow! <laughs> nice fish. Well, I'm gonna uh, put this back. Let's go to commercial break. And when we come back, uh, talk a little bit more about tides and uh, wind current and wind and all this other stuff does to us. Okay? Yep. All right. Let it go. Here we go. Fun Fishing is brought to you by Double X Tackle, Fisherman's Warehouse, and Vance's Tackle. Talk about a surprise. Well, I don't know if you got One of the things, Alan, you keep taking us out in the real windy stuff. Uh, why can't I we go in a cove without wind? Windy banks are always the best banks. Why is that? Because it helps with the current push things up where, you know, the small fish eat on plankton uh -huh. and get blowed up. And this, I've always liked to fish in the wind. I don't like to fish real calm here. Well, that looks like a Warren fish. You've got your name right there, W-A-R-R-E-N. <laughs> oh. Uh He's a walking fish. He's walking right across that stuff, isn't he? <laughs> That's a nice fish, Alan. Nice. Yeah. Put about 10 pounds. Oh, I thought it was closer to 25. <laughs> but this is a nice bass. Yeah. Or three. Maybe yeah. four. Smart move, dude. Well, Alan, we had tide. Had what? We had tide. We had a lot of tide. <laughs> As you saw in the morning, it was uh -huh. really high. And then, man, come time 11, 12 o'clock, that water is gone. Yes. And all you see is this weed. Well, let's talk about the equipment real quickly here. And uh, Any uh, of this stuff down here, you know, all my rods are all loaded with braid. Okay. Like 30 to 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. And um, these are fast action, seven foot rods. They're really stiff. And then, you know, just your regular reel that, you know, I only have 50 yards of braid on here. We don't even use 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what we used uh, out there today. Yeah, one of the first baits that we used today was a, actually a horny toad. When the water was like two feet over the top of the weeds, you know, we were picking our isolated um, sparse tulies. You cast past it and boom, they'd hit it. After that, we went to uh, the Cinco. 
once the water started to drop down just a little, it's a real slow presentation. So we had a good time out here. Yes. And uh, we hope you guys learned because, you know, we showed a lot of stuff. And we hope to see you next week on Fun, Fun Fishing. Fishing. Fishing is fine, but catching fish is funner. Whether it's autumn, winter, spring, or summer. From Sacramento River to the San Francisco Bay, we're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. Salmon, bass, or trout, halibut is what it's all about. Stripers on the Delta. Alan help yeah. <laughs> Our camera guy was out fishing the other day and he fell out of the boat, he couldn't get back in. The best way to do it is swim back to the back of the boat. Okay. Put your feet on there. Hit that trim button right here. Right here? Trim it up. Whoa. There you go, climb in. That's how you get back in the boat if you ever had to. Now if wow. he could do it, anybody could do it. <laughs> Use your motor, trim it back up, and you just climb right in. Alan! Alan, wait for me! Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.